What's up everyone, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual, and I am super excited to bring you today's tutorial. So we've had a lot of requests that you guys wanna see basically how I break down a vocal and how I mix that vocal. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be hopping into a pop track that I'm mixing for an artist right now. Her name is Emia, she's like this indie pop artist. She's amazing, she's got a super, super cool voice. She writes and produces all of her own stuff and she's absolutely killer. So it's gonna be fun actually diving into one of her new mixes and just showing you guys what we're doing behind the scenes. So. Just keep in mind that everybody's voice is different and a different voice will call for a different treatment and a different song will call for a different treatment. So just take some of the tools I'm using and figure out how to use those to your own advantage. Don't necessarily copy my settings and don't necessarily copy my chain. Just kind of follow my thought process and hopefully that'll help you. Hopefully you'll enjoy this video. If you do, Make Pop Music actually just launched our brand new website. So we've got all of our sample packs, we've got preset packs and we've got courses. So we've actually got two on vocals. We've got vocal engineering, which shows you how to track vocals, how to mix vocals, how to arrange vocals. Then we've got vocal production, which kind of shows you, you know, you were provided these vocals in a mix or in a production. And then there's just different techniques that we use to really spice that vocal up and give it some flavor. So the production one's more like creative mixing. And then the vocal engineering one is more like your standard vocal mixing. So if you want to go check those out right now, we would love the support. We've got a ton of free goodies. So make sure you sign up for the mailing list either way and check out some of the blogs and YouTube videos that we've already got on the website. But thank you so much for your support. Without further ado, let's actually hop into the tutorial. Cool, so now we're actually in the session. Let's go ahead and just take a listen to the actual song so we can hear what's going on. And then I'll actually break down everything that I did. All of these purple tracks or the vocal tracks, these are gonna be what we're going over. So we have a lead vocal, some delay throws. We've got like fast delays, reverb swells. We've got an octave like artificial harmony. We've got some chorus dubs, vocal synth, vocal choppy kind of stuff. Uh, vocoder. So we'll actually hop into everything individual. Let's just go ahead and take a quick listen. Just cause I said I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. Cause you're in my head. Yeah, I think about you. When he's not around, I let myself, let myself miss you. And I know that this might be an issue. To be hoping that you have it really. me back, you'd be somebody I could have had, but all I do is just mess around. Let's fast forward a little bit just so you can hear towards the ending when we have more vocal layers in here. Cool. So let's actually go ahead and hop into the vocal. So this first track is just like her little reverse vocal. I actually didn't need to do anything for that. I just left that as is, so we'll skip that. Let's go to the lead vocal. Let's actually take a listen to how it sounded when she sent it. So she sends her vocals already tuned and edited and everything, and they're tracked really, really, really well. So check this out. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. So the first thing I like to do in all of my vocal mixes is just turn on auto-tune and set it to the key of the song and just get the retune speed and the correction style somewhere that it feels right. Normally retune speed, I'll go between like 20 and 30 and I'll normally do correction, especially on like a pop song at like between 20 and 50. Um, just so it's not super, super auto tune but it's definitely got that really, really tight tune sound. So that's the first thing in the chain. That I don't want to, cause you're in my head. So it's, she's got it tuned, so it's not doing a ton, just catching anything that might have slipped through the cracks so I don't have to go through and spend hours and hours and hours tuning it. Um, next is gonna be virtual mix rack, so let's go ahead and start. The first thing I like to do is I like to use some kind of like uh, analog style EQ, just so it's got something that's got a little bit of like a preamp warmth and drive. And then I can also just use some of these parametric bands to do some stuff. So um, her vocal was really really bright and almost kind of thin so what i did is i added like some 220 for some body you can kind of hear it right here i said i can't be with you no that don't mean no that don't mean so i just added like a db there scooped like one db out of this 1.3k just because it was a little like a little like telephonic and, and tinny i can't be with you no that don't mean no that don't mean and then i just scooped like half a db like three quarters of a db from 3k just because the same thing it was a little thin and tinny that i don't want to because you're in my head yeah i think of 
and then I gave it like almost a 1 dB boost of this little high shelf. And that's really just to add that brightness that you really want in a pop vocal. So let's go ahead and hear it without the EQ and with the EQ real quick. Just cause I said I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want. So it just adds some warmth and some roundness to it just to kind of get that vocal to sit a little farther back in the mix. Um, just because it was a little bright and a little thin and brittle. So we wanted that top end, so we kept that there. But using some of these like scoops on these like high mid frequencies really helped smooth out a lot of those characteristics and then adding that high end right there was nice. Uh, next we have an 1176 style compressor. It's just the FG116. And we have the input and output right here just so we're hitting, I think we're doing like seven to 10 dB of gain reduction. I said, I can't be with you like five to 10, um, normally like five to seven. So I don't wanna hit too much with one compressor. What I'll do is I'll stack my compressors. So I'll do, you know, like five dB to 10 dB on one and then maybe 10 dB on another compressor. That way we're getting like 20 dB of gain reduction. So it's really, really tight in the mix, but we're not overloading one compressor. And then for attack, uh, I have it all the way up. So it's really a fast, it's a fast attack on an 1176 because this goes in reverse. So fast attack to really catch any of those initial transients. So nothing pokes out. And then uh, the release just all the way up as well. Seven and seven hundred mix. We're not really doing anything crazy there. Here's with and without. Cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that. And just hear how changing the attack and the release kind of changes the characteristic of it. No, that don't mean that I don't want to. Cause you're in my head, yeah I think about you. The higher you drive that up, the, the more compressed kind of sound you get. And we have the ratio just on four. I don't like to go too, too high on vocals. Um, normally if, if it's like a hip hop vocal or like a screaming vocal or something like that, sometimes I'll do eight or maybe even 12. But typically four to one is like my pop ratio that I really like to stick with. So that's what we're doing for compressor. Then we're just adding some air right here. We're adding like 1.2 dB of air on the top end just for that nice brightness. It's cause I said, I can't be with you. Now know what you're thinking, that's harsh, harsh as shit. It's got a lot of sibilance. So we're just gonna DS it real quick. Um, Pro DS is really, really simple to use. I just set the threshold so we get like four or five dB of gain reduction when there's an S coming in, but it leaves the brightness when there's not anything. So check it out. It's cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. So you don't want to DS too much. It'll start sounding like the singer has a lisp. So I'll normally just take out like four or five dB um, just so we're taking off the S's and the TH's, but we're also not like overkilling the vocal. So let's go ahead and take a listen in the mix. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. So it's sounding pretty good. I do want a little bit more compression and I want it to be even a little tighter. So we're going to use a two way since that's like a really, really, easy compressor to use. You don't really have attack or delay. It's just like an opt or attack or release. I'm sorry. It's just like an opto style compressor. Um, so we just set the gain to where we're going to get like 10 dB of gain reduction and then we'll set the peak. So we're this, the gain and the peak, it's really just kind of a balancing out to get the gain reduction that you want. And then you can just mess with this, the high frequency or flat frequency. That's just kind of affecting uh, how the compressor is hitting it. So just check this out. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to, cause you're in my head. So you can hear it really just tightens that up a little bit now. Hoping that you haven't really let me go. And it's really helping that sit nicely in the mix so we're not really having any issues of it poking out. Now the last thing we did was Pro-Q. I just cut out all of the low end just so there's no mic rumble or AC rumble or anything like that from her take. And then... And there was kind of like this woofiness around 200 and around 300. And then there was a little bit of tinniness around 920. And I wanted to add a little bit of just like vocal presence around uh, 1800. So let's check this out. Let's hear what each frequency is doing. I said, I can't be no, that wanted to scoop that crap out. Wanted to scoop a lot of that out. Wanted to scoop that out and then wanted to add a little bit yeah, of this. So here's it without the EQ and then with the EQ in the mix. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. It just takes away that blanket that's on a lot of the low end of that. That way it's not taking up too much space in my mix because I really like vocals bright and I want them full, but the more low end you have, the more it'll start feeding into your final limiter and everything else just gets kind of crowded and cluttered and it gets a bit 
wonky. So I don't like to have too much low end in vocal. So I just scoop some of that 200 out. Now let's get to the real sauce, my vocal parallel uh, sends. So I have vocal parallel widening. I think I've gone over these in a video before, but I'll do a quick little recap. On my widening, it's just a roll in dimension D set to three. That's literally it. There's no settings or anything that I have to tweak. Now let's take a listen at what that does. Cause you're in my head. Yeah, I think about you. When he's not around, I let myself, let myself miss you. So it's kind of just like a doubler kind of chorus effect. And I like to have it just to give some width to my vocal. So that's one of the ways I'll add width. And then second is gonna be my short reverb. And let's go ahead and see what I've got on that. So my short reverb is Verb Suite and it is the BM7 Rooms 1 preset with small vox. It's like 700 milliseconds ish, all the way wet since it is on ascend. And then we've got the pre-delay just so we get a little bit of clarity at the beginning of a vocal. So let's go ahead and let's take a listen to what it sounds like with that. And I know that this might be an issue To be hoping that you have so you're getting some more width and almost some slap back. It's kind of giving it like that, uh, like that bathroom vocal effect. And it's really, really nice for adding width and a little bit of depth. So we've also got a slab delay. Slab delay is just using uh, H delay on this. And let's see, it is just like 72 milliseconds offset on the left. And then I do high pass and low pass a little bit just to kind of eat up some of that sonic space that the slab delay will take up just so the width is not like the same frequency range as the other part and then I'll have it 100% wet. So here's what it sounds like with all three of those engaged. So let's hear this in the mix now. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. Cause you're in my head. So now you're seeing we're getting some width and some space. Um, it's really, really nice for letting a vocal sit in that big pop mix. So now we have a longer reverb. This is just gonna be a plate. I believe it's just the BM7 vocal plate. Yeah, 1.26 second kind of sustain. Um, and then a little bit of pre-delay and drive the attack up a little bit. That way it's not hitting exactly when the vocal comes in, um, just so it doesn't crowd the mix. 100% wet since it's on a parallel. And then most importantly, uh, I'm gonna filter out all the low end and all the high end just so the reverb is not getting cluttered up. So let me solo this out so you can kind of hear the difference. I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. Cause you're in my head. Yeah, I think about. So I like to take out a lot of those low mids of that reverb, especially on this particular instance, just so it doesn't clutter up the mix too, too much. I'll normally EQ out and filter my reverbs and my delays just so they don't get too much in the space of that lead vocal. Then we have our stereo vox delay. That's just H delay set to an eighth on ping pong. Feedback is pretty low. Wet is 100%. High pass and low pass just a little bit to filter it out. And then high pass and low pass here again, just to give it like that telephonic effect. And then I like to feed my delay back into my longer reverb. That way that delay is not a dry delay. That way it's not just this, the source signal dry just being repeated. It's actually got some of that reverb on it to give that some tail. So it's a really, really good way to kind of extend your reverb so it doesn't necessarily hit until the end. So check this out. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. Cause you're in my head. So now that's pretty much it for the main vocal. Let's take a listen. Just cause I said, I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to, cause you're in my head. So she actually had this that she sent. This is just her fast delay throw. And I just added a bit crusher just to give it some cool production effects, filtered it out. So it's not taking up too much space in the room and threw a delay on it. So here's, or I'm sorry, a reverb on it. Here's what it sounded like with hers. So it's cool. She did a good job with that and it's exactly where she wants it, which makes it easy for me. Here's what it sounds like with all my effects that I just threw on it. And again, that's just bit crusher. That's my settings. Pro Q filtered out and then just a really big kind of like hall style reverb on this. So check this out now. Know that this might be of myself miss you. And I know that this might be an and then she also did these reverb swells, so she sent these to me. Um, and then I just added my own reverb to kind of help them sit in the mix a little bit better. You'll hear it right here, check it out. So 
So this is a really cool effect. What I'll do is a lot of the time I'll set up a track with a vocal on it and I'll set the reverb to 100% wet and I'll just kind of automate that track as its own track. So it's almost like you create a parallel track uh, but it's just the lead normally duplicated and then throw on a reverb 100% wet and then you can just blend it in as you need to just to give it some space and some depth. So here's what it sounds like with that vocal underneath it. And me go, does it help to know that I still want you? Or am I just saying things that you don't need to know if nothing? So that's a really cool way to add kind of space, maybe in like a pre-chorus or some part where the arrangement gets a little bit denser. And then we also did these. She didn't send these. I did these myself. But on the end of these phrases, it sounded a little bare. It, is you to be hoping that it sounded a little bare on that end phrase. So I just copy and pasted that vocal and then d uh, duplicated the actual chain threw on a big hole, 100% wet, and H delay, like 50% wet, 40% wet-ish, um, and then just filtered it out. So I basically made my own delay throw. So that vocal delay adds a nice little space to that. So now we're basically up to where we've got other stuff coming in. So once we get here, um, she actually did a lot of this vocal production herself, so I just really had to mix it. She sent this octave below right here, and really all she probably did was take auto-tune or little altar boy and just duplicate the main vocal and drag that down an octave. And then what I did, here's what it sounded Things like. you don't need to know if nothing, if nothing were holding me back, you'd be... So that's what it sounded like. And I actually threw doubler on the double four voices setting. Then I just compressed it a lot with a 2A doing like 10 to 20 dB of gain reduction. Then just bottomed out a little bit of those low ends so it's not super, super muddy. So here's what it sounds like now. The world in the back, you'd be so now we're getting some of that width and space. Then just sends it to the same kind of parallel tracks, the long reverb, the short reverb, and the delay. So here's what it sounds like now. So now it's kind of sitting in with that main vocal a little bit better. It's not so dry. It's not so weird. She actually sent these, these like chorus tracks with her own processing on them. So these are like the duplicates. So she definitely went for like a filtered and phasey kind of vibe. So I just did the auto tune, basically the same exact chain as her main vocal. But what I did was I scooped some of the mids out and added some highs just so they would sit in with that main vocal and then sent them to the same exact parallel chain, uh, the widening, the short, the slap, the long and the stereo delay. So here's what it sounds like now. All I do is just mess around, leave it hanging, then let you down, oh. So that's it for that. Then she's just got this little exhale patch. I don't really think, I, yeah, I didn't do anything to this. So here's what we have now. Then, if nothing were holding me back, you'd be somebody I could have had. But all I do is just mess around, leave it hanging, then let you down, oh. Then she has this little vocal chop in here. I didn't have to do anything to it, it sounded cool. Then she's got this vocal synth right here. All I did to this was filter out some of the lows and boost some of the highs, added my own uh, reverb just to give it some more depth, and added my delay. So here's what it sounded like when she sent it. So here we are, standing apart while I am pretending. Then she sent these ad libs. She also did all the processing on these, so I didn't really have to do too, too much. Um, very similar. Everything kind of goes to these same parallel delays, and everything kind of just gets duplicated from that main vocal track. So you can kind of hear, here's what it sounded like originally. So I just threw on the same EQ and compression and everything just to kind of help it sit in with that main vocal. Threw on those parallels, and then we have a harmony left and right. Something changes. And these are, again, just the same kind of chain from the main vocal. And then what I did is I just scooped some of the 300 out here. And I think some of like the four or 500 out here. Yeah, 450 out here. Just because they were kind of mid-heavy. So here's what it sounds like with the main vocal on those. That I'm not open, that 
nothing changes I'm still looking for excuses just to meet you halfway And it kills me now when you are listening Denji has a vocoder coming over here and for the vocoder it didn't really need too much um, Again, just I can actually probably take auto-tune off. It's not really doing anything on it. Just DSing, compressing, adding some EQ, and then we scooped out some lows and added some highs, and again, have those parallel sends just for some depth and space. Somebody I could have had, but all I do is just mess around. Leave it hanging and let you down, oh. If you're wondering how to do a vocoder, we've actually done a full tutorial on that. Um, it's just the how to make a vocoder like Taylor Swift, Halsey, and maybe Chainsmokers or somebody else. Um, but yeah, you can just go watch that. It's super simple. It's like a 10 minute video of how to make your own vocoder uh, using Isotope Vocal Synth 2, which I'm pretty positive is what um, Ann or Emia used on this. So that's the vocoder. We're almost done. We've got a couple more vocal tracks to kind of take a look at. We've got this little breakdown lead here. Here's what it sounded like with nothing on it. So you can tell she definitely used something like vocal synth for that as well. I added Camel Crusher just to add some compression and saturation. Uh, Bit Crusher to add some like weird little artifacts. Filtered it out. Um, that way it's not getting too much in the way of my mix. Added a reverb so it is nice and fat and long. That's what she said. <laughs> After that, we have the ending vocal chop, and that's what this sounds like with nothing. Again, bit crush, filter out, super simple. Uh, she had this bridge delay that she did herself. I just added a doubler just to give it some space and then threw on my own reverb. Inside my dreams. Oh, 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 when the world is asleep, I'm right where you are. Baby, we can meet inside my dreams. So I added a doubler just to spread that little vocal delay kind of thing out um, so it's not in the way of that main vocal and then I just threw on some reverb to push it back in the mix a little bit. And then uh, the last two things we have are we have this one little chop right here that literally I didn't do anything on it, I already had all the reverb and everything printed. Then we have the outro vocal here and this is basically the same as the main vocal but what I did was I added my own delay as an insert here on a fourth delay. Um, like 20% wet, filtered it out of course, and then I added a super big hole, like almost two and a half seconds, um, about 25% wet, and what that does is now the end kind of just has a special vibe to it. So listen to it, I'll, I'll mute those, and then I'll add them in. Other than that, the chain is exactly the same, I think. Um, yep, should be. So I added that reverb and delay so that ending really has like that nice like wavy lush kind of vibe. So yeah, let's just go through and recap. The main thing that we really needed to cover was this lead vocal. Lead vocal was just auto-tune, virtual mix rack with a uh, like 1073 style EQ, 1176 style compressor, and just a nice like digital air to give some bright end at like 10k to 15k. Then we have it DSing, just doing like 5 dB of gain reduction on the S's. Then we have a uh, two-way style compressor right here, doing like 5 to 10 dB of gain reduction. So total, we're probably getting like 15 to 20 dB of gain reduction. Scooped out some 200 because it was a little boomy and annoying. And then sent it to Roland Dimension D on setting three, a like 700 millisecond short room sound from Verb Suite, a slab delay from H delay, a I think like 1.7 second uh, vocal plate from Verb Suite, filtered out the lows, filtered out the highs, and then a 1 fourth, or I'm sorry, 1 eighth stereo delay from H delay, and filtered out the lows, filtered out the highs, and then 
and did kind of like a telephone EQ. And then other than that, it was really just treating all the cool little vocal production stuff she sent me. A lot of it was just able to duplicate the main vocal track and then just make creative changes to that. So like the bit crushing, adding the extra reverb, adding the extra delays, uh, doing doublers and wideners and stuff like that. But I mean, that's really pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take a listen to this without anything on the vocals. And then we'll do one more listen with everything and we should be good to go. So here's what it sounded like with nothing. Just cause I said I can't be with you. No, that don't mean, no, that don't mean that I don't want to. Cause you're in my head. Now it's with it. Yeah, I think about you. When he's not around, I let myself, let myself miss you. And I know that this might be an issue. So you can see the main vocal with this was really, really, really good to start with. We really just needed to compress it so it was kind of a little bit more uh, well balanced and it doesn't really flop around in the mix. And then other than that, we just needed to add some depth. So we did that with uh, the widening and then a short delay, a uh, long delay, and then a short reverb and a long reverb. So those are my ways to just kind of tighten up a vocal and then add some space and add some depth. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's really all Emia needed on this track. Hopefully you can use some of these tips in your own vocal mixes. Awesome, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was super fun to go through. Emmy is always super, super fun to actually mix because she's got such a killer voice and her production and arrangements are always so fun and unique. So I really had a good time. Hopefully you learned some stuff. If you guys wanna see me do a male vocalist or maybe a female with a different voice, some kind of like lower voice or something a little bit different, just let me know because the more voices we actually cater to on the channel, the more you'll actually start to understand the principles and the ideas. Like I said, if you want to know more about vocal production and vocal engineering, definitely go check out the courses that we have on the new Make Pop Music site. Other than that, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps us out a ton. We've got 16 and a half thousand subscribers and we're going super, super, super fast. So I really appreciate all the support and we are excited for new content. We'll be having new content every Tuesday and Thursday so definitely make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on. But that's going to do it for this video, so just let us know what you guys want to see next time and we'll try to actually cater to that. But that's going to do it, so we will see you guys next time. Much love. Peace out, Make Pop Music.